Hello, in this session I am going to take the mechanical power transmission. In this mechanical power transmission means whenever the mechanical power in the form of shaft power generated by the different framers like motor, uh, electrical motor, generator and turbines and these whatever the rotary shaft power is there that is to be transmitted to the different systems in order to have the functions of the different machines and for that purpose we are going to use the different power transmission systems in that one if the distance between the two shafts is less and positive power transmission is required we are going to use the gear drive as a mechanical power system and in this session i am going to discuss about the gear drive gears we are going to use for the power transmission in the gear drive and these gears are the fields provided with the teeth on its periphery and these we can see here what are means by gears but these are gears which are having the teeth on its periphery if the two gears are used for the power transmission here we can see the teeth are matching with each other in order to have the power transmission then there are different types of gears we are going to use that is First one is spur gear, bevel gear, helical gear, worm gear, rack and pinion. And I am going to discuss the one by one these gears. The first one is a spare spur gears. Uh, that is a uh, spur gear is the simplest and most commonly used gear. It's very simple and uh, most commonly it is used in the all the type of power transmissions. And use it particularly connect the parallel and non-intersecting shaft. We are going to connect this by using parallel shafts, those are non-intersecting. And these shapes of the gear are simple and cost is also less. The teeth are straight and parallel to axis of the shaft, axis of the field that one, the gear wheel. Those are teeth are straight, used to where the noise is permissible. That means in this gear, if you use for the power transmission, the noise will be higher. And example, in this machine tools and watches, in there the noise is permission, noise is not bothered, therefore these spur gears are used. We can see here, these are the two are the spur gears which are used for the power transmission. The teeth are straight and parallel to the axis of the shaft and these transmit the power. And here we can see that one in the rotation that is. This is a driver gear which is provides the power, driving gear that one. This is the driven. Okay, this gear is driven by this driver gear. Okay, like this the rotation we can see for these two spur gears. Here also the inner view we can see that is spur gear rotation. The, these are the teeth which are meeting. In that one is driver gear, another one is a driven gear. And these two in the side we can see the angle which are um, uh, connecting each other for the power transmission. In this direction it is rotating and the opposite direction to that one the small gear is rotating. This one, the sketch of this spur gear in the side view can see. The next type of gear is a helical gears. Used to transmit the powers between the parallel or non-parallel shafts, but non-intersecting shafts. Here the shafts are parallel, maybe non-parallel. But these two shafts are non-intersecting. Even though if you produce these shafts, those will not intersect each other. And teeth are curved and helical in shape. The teeth are usually curved. And helical, that shape is in different helical shape to teeth will be there. And smooth operation as it results in gradual gear engagement. As the teeth are helical in shape, the gradual gear engagement will be there. And therefore, the smooth operation will be there. Used in a smooth and quiet running. Okay, here the quiet running means noise will not be produced. The noise is very less and the smooth operation will be there for the using helical gears. Here we can see that one helical shaped gears are there, these are the curved gears and these are the parallel shafts which are connected with the helical gears and here the gradual engagement is there and it means initially at one end it will engage and other end it will be engaged later and here also we can see non-parallel shafts. Here this is a shaft is in this axis, the axis is particularly some other direction it is, some angle that one and gear engagement initially at this point it will be taking place, later this will be taking place and gradual engagement due to that the noise production, production will be less and smooth operation will be there compared to that spur gear. The next type is the helical uh, bevel gears and these bevel gears use it to transmit the power between non-parallel and intersecting shafts. Here the parallel uh, shafts are non-parallel but intersecting and these are usually intersect at a 90 degree. 
12 gates are usually intersect at 90 degrees. The teeth are formed on a conical surface, thicker at the base. The teeth are formed on a conical surface only and those are thicker at the base. The teeth may be straight or spiral. The teeth may be straight or spiral that one. Spiral bear gates are used to eliminate the impact effect that means direct impact during the transmission in order to avoid that one spiral uh, bevel gears are used here we can see these two are the teeth okay where the in the 90 degrees the power transmission will be taking place and these teeth are formed okay uh, thicker at the base and it will be thinner at the center of that one and here the we can see in the side view that one okay the sketch of this okay this is the one shaft that is a driving shaft then the one is a driven shaft and these two shafts are power transmission at 90 degree taking place those are intersect at the 90 degree here those are intersecting each other axis of the two will be at 90 degree and here we can see the operation okay these two are at 90 degree the power transmission and thicker at the uh, surface and uh, at the base and the conical surface that it are found we can see here here the, the two bevel type the gears we can see this is the straight teeth at the bottom the thicker will be there and the thinner at the center this one the teeth are straight this one and these are the spiral bevel gears the spiral shapes will be there the bevel gear teeth that is spiral bevel gears the next type is a worm gear or we can say worm and worm gear okay two worm gears we are going to use here that's why we can say worm and worm gear also used to transmit the power between the shafts at 90 degree but non-intersecting here also transmit the 90 degree power but uh, shafts are non-intersecting and it consists of the screw is one is a worm that is called a screw another one is a wheel that is called as a worm wheel that is a worm gear used to use where the large gear reduction is required that is a 20 is to 1 to the 300 is to 1 that is the speed gear reduction whatever is there that is required larger the slow speed is rotated from the high speed prime mover then we are going to use the gear direction this one larger gear direction and high torque will be transmitted using this one used in the power steering okay the even those power small turning the larger turning is requirement here and presses okay from the larger ro rotation the small uh, slower speed operation will be there in this uh, presses and the rolling mills here we can see this one worm and worm wheel this is a worm screw and this is worm wheel and here the axis of this one is in this direction and right angles to this one the axis here we can see okay the right angles to this one matching each other the power transmission will be right angles and the gear reduction will be higher for this type that is a requirement then we are going to use the this type of gear then here the worm wheel operation we can see okay here the worm wheel is rotating and the screw is also rotating therefore this shaft also rotates the axis of the worm wheel in this direction axis of the this screw will be in this direction next one is a rack and pinion here used to convert the rotational motion into a linear motion rack is a gear having a teeth along the straight line and pinion is a gear wheel with the teeth on its periphery could have straight or a bevel teeth and greater feedback is there for this rack and pinion type of the gear here used to convert this rotational motion into the linear motion that one okay that is the main purpose of this one and the teeth may be straight or a in uh, that is uh, uh, curved that one it may be depending upon that one and this is a pinion uh, sorry uh, rack it is called that is the teeth are there on the straight line and this is the pinion on its periphery feel the gears are there okay this is about the rack and pinion gear and spur gear terminology we have to use here the spur gear, spur gear terminology means the gear terminology which is used to calculate the gear ratio and number of teeth and also the diameters like that okay that is uh, user usually the mainly two terminology we have to discuss here that's the one is velocity ratio that is the ratio of the speed of the driver gear to the uh, driven gear that is okay that is n2 by n1 is equal to the d1 by d2 by this equation we can write this one and since uh, the d is equal to mz that is a mean and z is a that is a number of t that one that actually the t we can de no, denote that one 
and here the mainly velocity ratio in that we can write that is it is the ratio of the uh, uh, whatever this uh, driven gear uh, speed to the driver gear speed and that is equated to the uh, driver gear uh, diameter to the driven gear diameter number of teeth on the driver gear to the number of teeth on the driven gear like that we can give the velocity ratio and any terms you can calculate from this one that is the velocity ratio important here and the gear ratio the, the can be given at t2 by t1 that is the number of teeth on the driven gear to the number of teeth on driven uh, driving gear and here this is ratio of the number of teeth of the follower t2 to the number of teeth on driver okay that is a t2 by t1 gear ratio and this equation is important to calculate the the whatever the speed or diameter of the number of teeth this terminology is we are going to use the next is about the gear train the arrangement of two or more than two gear is known as the gear train two major gears always rotated in opposite direction okay this two or more gear, gear if you are used those are called as a grain trains this is one of the example of the gear train this is the driver, uh, driven gear and this is the driver gear and this spur gear example is taken and the, what are the types of gear trains the simple gear trains compound gear train okay then these two gears we can uh, gear trains we can discuss the first one is a simple gear train in this simple gear train each wheel is mounted on separate shaft the one gear is mounted on the separate shaft that one intermediate gears gears acts like a driver as well as the follower this may act as well as a driver for the driven gear and the follower for the driver gear okay like that these two acts intermediate gears also called as a, known as the idler gear that's the idler gear that will not having power in it but it can take the driver gear power from the driver gear and transmit it to the that is driven gear the idler gear also affect the sense of rotation there is a odd number of gear rotate in the same direction while even number of gear rotate in the opposite direction that we know that if the two gears are connected each other rotate in the opposite direction okay then odd numbers if you that one rotate in the same direction even numbers if you take rotate in the opposite direction the transmission ratio depends upon the first and last gear only that is n1 by n when to tn by t1 that is the transmission ratio that is depending upon the uh, whatever the driver gear is there and driven gear not to have uh, any intermediate gears here we can see that one this is a simple gear train okay simple gear train here the, this driver gear is there rotating in the anti clockwise direction this is the intermediate gear that is called as a idler, idler gear that is rotating in the clockwise direction and driven gear which is connected here that is also rotate in the anti clockwise direction same direction as of the driver gear okay here the main purpose is to have the same direction of rotation and also the reduction whatever is required for that purpose we are going to use here and uh, also here this idler gear whatever is there this is the follower for driver gear and this is the uh, whatever the uh, driver gear for this driven gear like this here also you can see this here you can see the whatever the rotation is there this is rotating in the clockwise direction this also rotates in the clockwise direction and the intermediate gear is rotating in the anti clockwise direction then idler gear whatever is the rotation actual this uh, video you can see from here that's the idler gear compound gear train if the two gear wheels are mounted on a common shaft then it is called as a, a compound gear train Okay, on one shaft it is the two gears are mounted then we can call it a compound gear train the driver gear and the driven gear are mounted on the separate shafts and intermediate gears are there those can be mounted one, two more than one gears are mounted on the intermediate shafts except first and last shaft all other intermediate shaft carry the two gear wheels two wheels are mounted on the same shaft rotate in the same speed the whatever the intermediate gears one which are mounted on the same shaft those will rotate in the same speed at the same speed one wheel act as a driver and while other act as a follower with the same speed okay that is the intermediate gears are there one wheel uh, act as a driver and another one act as a follower the transmission ratio known by n, n is the product of the teeth of the follower to the product of teeth of the driver gear 
this is the different for this compound gear here we can see this one this is the driver gear which is mounted on the shaft and here will be the uh, another gear which will be there okay intermediate gear this one okay that intermediate gear will be connected with this one that is a compound gear here and compound gear will be connected to the driven gear and here the another example here we will see that one in this one gear A is connected to the gear B and the gear C and gear B it is connected to the gear C the both are mounted on the same shaft these are the intermediate gears and that will drive the gear C drives the gear D like this here this gear A is the driver gear and gear B is the follower for the driver gear and gear C is the driver, uh, driver gear for the gear D okay like that one this is a gear B is the follower gear C is the that is driver gear like this here we can see in the picture this is the one gear and that is connected to this gear in the, which is the follower and that is connected on the same shaft another gear and that rotates the shaft okay that is in the compound gear you can have this this is the A6P gearbox as an example for the all gear power transmission here this, this is the first gear second gear third gear fourth fifth sixth and reverse gears here the engagement of the each gear will be by using these levers inner transmission shaft that one outer transmission shaft and clutches are there in order to engage and disengage of the different gears but these are the gears which are used to transmit the power according to the gear applied the next one differential of the car the differential gearbox of the car like this is one. 